In today's video, we're gonna discuss how many devices can you install on the RS-485 subnetwork, the BACnet MSTP subnetwork, master slave token passing. How many VAV controllers, BMS controllers, electric meters, variable speed drives? How many can we put on one segment? This video is gonna have three parts. In the first part, I'm just gonna tell you what the number is which is quite obvious because if you Google it, there's a lot of information out there about how many devices you can put on there. While we add it, I'm gonna give you my personal opinion as to how they estimated that number 30 or 40 years ago, which will then lead into part two of this video, which will be that I'm not sure that that estimation they did 30, 40 years ago is still relevant nowadays. The number could be much higher. And the third part of this video which is the reason why I'm actually creating this video, parts one and two, that is the build up to get to part three. In part three, I wanna to introduce to you a new concept that we should be completely thinking about a different way to estimate the number of devices on the RS-485 network. What we've been doing for the last 30, 40 years, in my opinion, nowadays is no longer relevant at all. And we need to change our thinking about that. Okay, part one, you can put 32 devices on the subnetwork. There's a lot of information on this on the internet. If you Google it, there's a lot of people that are saying it's 32 devices. You probably can put a repeater and then another 32, although I personally have never done that before. And I don't see BMS companies nowadays doing that. So for the purpose of this discussion, it's one subnetwork and not a repeater. 32 devices. Let me tell you my opinion as to, or my thoughts as to where this number came from. It's not necessarily a fact, this is my opinion. So I think a long time ago, somebody sat down with like, you know, a kilometer of cable and they started adding devices onto the subnetwork. Interface cards. I don't know what they were, but it's an interface card. And they were adding more interfaces onto the subnetwork and loading the subnetwork more and more and more and more. And they would have been looking at the performance of the communications and the signal, and you know the ones and zeros, you know the amplitude of the signal, and they would have determined that at this many devices, the signal is deteriorating, we've overloaded the subnetwork, and the network performance is not reliable. Then they come back a bit and they said, okay, it looks like for this length of cable, with these interface cards, it's about 32 devices. Now, sometimes you will see them, they'll talk on the internet about one device load. So they're saying that at that time, 30, 40 years ago, these interface cards loaded the network one device load, a single device load, there's 32 of them. So that's where I think the 32 came from. So let's move now into part two of this discussion. My personal opinion, it's not a fact, I would assume that our current modern day BMS devices, VAV boxes, electric meters, variable speed drives and things, I would assume that the interface cards that we're using nowadays are more efficient or more effective than the interface cards they used 30, 40 years ago. I'm proposing that 30, 40 years ago, it was a single device load per interface card in the test, I'm suggesting that nowadays our interface cards are a quarter of the device load or a half of the device load. Like surely, why would technology in such a long time not have improved and load the network less? It's an opinion, take it or leave it. So I'm, I think that we could put much more devices on the RS-485 subnetwork, you know, from 32, 40, 50, 60. I'm not sure how far you could go, but I'm proposing that 32 is no longer relevant nowadays, in my opinion, not a fact. So if I was a BMS company owner, or I was the engineering manager at a BMS company, I would say to one of my engineers, listen here, take next week off, go and buy two drums of 500 meters of cable and lay them out in the warehouse. 
I want you to roll out 10 meters of cable, connect one VAV box. 10 meters of cable, one VAV box. And I would retest this like they may have done 30, 40 years ago. I would take photos of the warehouse. I would take, I would document in detail the day I did the test, what time I did the tests, how many devices we were adding, lots of information in there and document this properly. And then I'd have a network control or a gateway connected to the sub network. And I would study the performance of the communications network. Maybe you had an oscilloscope, you could measure the signal, whatever. Although we don't do that much in BMS land. But I would study this thing to death and create this document. And I would prove for myself that I could put, you know, 64 devices on one sub network. Then I would go to a real job, an appropriate job, and I would, you know, I would do it in real life. Good quality cable, properly installed, properly terminated, properly screened, properly earthed, the things that we don't actually do and take photos document the whole thing the people that were there the dates the times document the study of it then when you submit your design submission through to a consultant like myself your network design and i say to you whoa 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 you've got too many devices in the sub network you say stuff you politely mr consultant read this i would read this document oh yeah yeah mm, that's interesting and the one from the, the actual site test, the case study. Oh, that's, wow, I love that. I would stamp that document, your network design, I'd approve it, and I would say, if you have any network communication problems, then you as the contractor shall rectify those issues at no extra cost to the customer. Just to cover myself, right? Because 32 is the number. So I'm proposing that you'd get that over the line. That would work. Now let's transition to part three of this video. Part three of this video is actually why I'm recording this video. Hopefully you made it this far. Part one and two was a build up to get to this part right now. So here we go. I'm proposing that times have changed and we need to nowadays, let me pause for a second there. For the last 30 or 40 years, we have been trying to get as many devices on the sub network as possible so that we could daisy chain the first floor, the second floor, the third floor, and the fourth floor of VAVs all together, which means that we could reduce the number of gateways and network controllers. And daisy chaining long runs through chiller plant rooms, boiler plant rooms, up onto the roof through the cooling tower plant area. So forever, our objective has been to save money. Let's put as many devices as possible on the sub network to save money on network controllers and gateways. Now I'm saying to you this, I think that nowadays we need to prioritize keeping our sub networks as short as possible, which is the opposite to what as long as possible. Because nowadays we don't just have the BMS server polling the sub networks for data. We have an energy management system server and a building analytics server and I have a few jobs where the customers have machine learning optimization servers running in the cloud. So nowadays we have multiple different supervisory devices polling the BMS sub networks for data. So we need to keep the sub network shorter. My, the lifecycle control specification says provide separate RS485 sub networks per floor and per plant room. So I'm trying to bring the sub networks down to be shorter, as short as possible, not as long as possible. We need to start building our BMS networks and our sub networks to provide high quality data, high speed data to the cloud technologies that are coming. So my thoughts are, we don't need the network to be as long as possible or as many devices as possible. We want to shorten them which is completely opposite to what we've been doing for the last 20 or 30 years. So how many devices can we put on the RS485 subnetwork? 32. <laughs> so we've just circled back to the start. So I think that the maximum number of devices on an RS485 subnetwork is 32. Not because of the volt drop, not because of loading, not because that's all that we can do, but that's because we wanna have short subnetworks and provide good quality data to all these cloud technologies that we have now and there'll be more in the future. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.